Okay, today we're going to start talking about probability. We're going to go over the probability rules. Now, probability has to be between the values of 0 and 1 if you're in decimal form, or 0 and 100 percent if you're percentage. If you have a 20 percent chance that it's going to rain today, then you have an 80 percent chance that it's not, which means if you split probability into any categories, then the sum of the probabilities has to equal 1. So for example, if you have a, um, let's say, a spinner that is cut into four different colors, and you have red, blue, green, and orange, okay? The probability of you getting red, that's 25, 0.25 or 25 percent. The probability of you getting blue is the same. The probability of you getting green and orange is exactly the same. That's supposed to be an O for orange. If you were to add all of these probabilities together, you would get 1. Okay, all of these values are in between 0 and 1, and when you add them together, you get 1. Okay, probability is not negative, so you should have no negative numbers when dealing with probability. You should have no numbers greater than 1 if you're dealing with probability. And also, if it asks for a probability model, this right here is an example of a perfect probability model because when you add all the values together, it equals 1. Okay, now we need to learn about, you know, just some basic definitions. For example, an experiment. An experiment is exactly what it sounds like. It's that you're going to complete an action, like rolling a die. That would be an experiment, drawing a card, um, things like that. A sample space are all possible outcomes, okay? So for example, let's say that you're rolling a die. All possible outcomes for rolling a die are the numbers 1 through 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That would be the sample space. Drawing a card, I would have to tell you all 52 cards or 54 cards if you're dealing with jokers inside the deck. That would be your sample space. If you're flipping a coin, your sample space would either be heads or tails, okay? An event is a subset of that sample space. So let's say that, <coughs> let's say that you're, um, I just want to get heads. What's the probability of me getting heads? That would be an event, a probability of me getting heads. And because that is a subset of a sample space, because a sample space is tails or heads. So it's just an event that would happen. What's the probability of me getting the king of hearts? That's an event, because the king of hearts is a subset of the sample space of drawing a card. Um, it doesn't have to be that specific either. It could be, what's the probability of me drawing a black card? That is also a, um, an event, because that's a subset of the sample space, because there's uh, 26 black cards in a deck of cards. So that's still a subset of the sample space. Okay, so that's how you want to think of it, is it's a subset of the sample space. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to you about the types of probability. There's three types for, I don't know, I'll, I'll list them all out, um, that um, I want you to know. There's lots of types, but they're the ones I'm going to highlight. The first one I'm going to highlight are the classical, uh, is classical probability, also known as theoretical probability, and that's what I call it. I call it theoretical probability. And that's what's supposed to happen. If you have a, um, a, a coin, heads or tails, What's the probability that you're going to get heads? You have a one out of two chance that you're going to get heads. That's what's supposed to happen. But isn't it possible for me to stand here and flip a coin twice and not get heads at all? Sure, but I'm supposed to get heads um, at least one out of two times. Okay, if I look at that spinner that I made a while ago, what's the probability of me getting red? One out of four. I'm supposed to get red one out of four ch um, times. That's my probability. <coughs> has my chance, but it is possible that I don't get red at all. And then the probability of you picking a king of hearts would be, in average, 1 out of 52 times. So 1 out of 52 draws, that is the probability of me getting hearts. So when they ask you, hey, what's the theoretical probability? This is what would happen in a perfect world. The next type is empirical probability. That's what actually happened. So an experiment was actually done, and it's based on real data. Okay, so for example, okay, 
Let's say I tossed a coin a hundred times, and out of those times, 56 times I got heads, and 44 times I got tails. So you see here how I'm already starting by giving you data. I'm already starting by telling you about an experiment. So that's empirical probability, because I'm actually basing it on an experiment that I did. I'm giving you the data. Based on those results, what's the probability of you getting heads? Well, based on this data, the probability of me getting heads is 0.56, because 56% of the time I'm getting um, heads. And I got 56%. 56 out of the 100 times is 0.56, or 56%. And then 44 out of the 100 times is 44% that I got tails. So if I'm asking the probability of me getting heads, it'd be 50.56 or 56%. Okay, let's look at this problem. According to a certain country's Department of Education, 41.6% of three-year-olds are enrolled in daycare. So what is the probability of a child not in daycare? This right here, you guys, is called the complement, the complement of probability. That's saying that a probability of an event happening um, plus the probability of an event not happening, and it's denoted with that prime, you can also see it as a bar in different textbooks, so it just depends. But you can see it with the prime or the bar, and it has to equal 1, and that's what kind of what I was talking about earlier. If you have a 20% chance that it's going to rain today, then what's the complement of that? Well, then I have an 80% chance that it's not going to rain today, and that would be its complement because 80 plus 20 equals 100%, or 0.2 plus 0.8 equals 1. So if you have a 41.6% chance of a 3-year-old being enrolled in daycare, then what is the probability that the child would not be in daycare? You would just do 1 minus the 0.416, or 100 minus 41.6. It really just depends on what your homework is asking for. If you want to stay in decimal notation or percentage, so if I did 1 minus 0.416, I would get 0.584. So the probability that the students would not be in daycare would be 0.584 or 58.4%. Other than that, guys, um, probability is pretty simple. Like if you had this, if I said, hey, let the sample space S be this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And I want the probability that um, I choose an odd number. Now, this right here is theoretical. I'm not basing it off any data. I've never done this before. I don't have any times how many times I've drawn. This right here is theoretical probability, okay? Um, it's not based off data. All I've given you is my sample space. Well, I have five numbers that are odd, 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9, out of nine numbers total. So I have a 5 out of 9 chance of getting an odd number. Or you could give me 0.56, which is approximately 0.56, or 56%. Just make sure you read the blue fine print on your homework and express the answer they want you to express it in. Okay? So when you list probability in the, um, sorry, when you list your answer dealing with theoretical probability, it's going to be, probability of an event equals the probability of the possibilities of the event divided by the number of sample spaces. I'm sorry, let me erase that. That's not what I meant. It's by the number of ways the event can take place divided by the number of terms in the sample space. So there was five odd numbers, right? That's the event, because odd numbers are a subset of the sample space. And then there were nine numbers total in the sample space. So it was five out of nine. All right, so that's basically it. That's basically how probability works. Um, hopefully you learned a lot, and um, you can try your homework now.